And I think there's no better group in the world to help change business and to do, you know, solve the tougher problems than creative designers and people in marketing, people who really think of this stuff. So I think it's our opportunity to take this stuff that we've got and take it out of the design studio into the boardroom. I love making things, uh, I have a real passion for that, and I like making really good things. Actually, a friend of mine came to me and said, you love it, you're good at it, you should stay at it. How many people find what they love and actually can make a living doing it? I actually think that if we represent a climate change as a quality of life issue and say there is the opportunity to increase our quality of life while solving this problem, we engage most of society in the conversation and the solutions. You know, we make claims about green products, it's just not true. Let's know where we're going so we figure out what the hell we have to do. And, and the, the overarching idea that I'd like to explore is this notion of design as strategy. So what you see on the wall and how people respond to it is that intangible energy that is just at the heart of design thinking. A lot of people are tortured by this fact, the fact that, but I do kind of look at things in a very childlike fascination where something just, you know, excites me and I just kind of blindly go for it. And it's all the more reason I want to be very careful with the things that I choose to do because I want to be passionate about it and hopefully when people see it or hear it or, or go to it then they'll feel the same way, you know, without worrying about if you fail. I mean, failing for me is learning. I mean, that's, you know, how else do you learn if you don't fail at something? I mean, Craigslist will help you get through the day. People want us to keep the site simple and fast, you know, easy to use and effective. You know, I feel like movies right now feel like they're made from the parts of other movies, you know, but there's a short window of time where filmmakers can control how audiences see the films. And there's no pause button, and there's no phone ringing. You occasionally get run into people who's, for whatever reason, something that you did you know, purely for entertainment affects them in a way that changes their life a little bit. <laughs> Those are the kind of movies I want to do where they don't get diminished by time. To me, medium is irrelevant, you know? I don't care uh, how the story's being told, as long as it's a good story. This is sort of the, the lovely legends that have arisen, the sort of romantic, maybe they're true, maybe they're not, but they're certainly good stories. That gives you kind of a, a sense of the little bit of the romance and the, the scale of coffee. I don't have to feel like it's part of a focus group. I want to feel like 
when I'm talking about it, I've given birth to it and I'm super proud of it and then I can I can talk about it with passion. I didn't have any pressure to make it commercially viable, I had pressure to make it good, period.